Let's have a look at again at some of the connections between this normal form and the features of the line. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at, at this thing. So if we start from the normal equation, again, it looks in that form. Generic vector times the normal is equal to the specific point vector times the same normal. Well, from this we can get the general equation again by expanding the dot product and keeping in mind that what we have on the right hand side is just a constant. Also, we can uh, extract from the, this equation the normal vector, but we can extract this normal vector also from the general equation. Notice that the normal vector, of course, which is given by n1 and 2, consists exactly of the component of the coefficients uh, in the uh, general equation. So if I give the general equation from that, just by copying things down, you should be able to obtain right away a vector which is normal to the line. But if I have a two-dimensional vector and I know that it's normal or perpendicular to the line, I can construct another vector right away which is parallel to the line. All I have to do is construct a vector perpendicular to the normal. Okay? And we know how to do that. This is what we call a direction vector. And of course it's going to be any multiple of the vector that we obtain by taking the normal and 1 and 2, switching the two components and changing the sign of one of them. You may remember this is the trick that we use to construct a vector perpendicular to a given vector. So uh, the normal uh, form therefore has a whole bunch of information, a whole host, host of information uh, that we can extract very very easily simply basically by picking the right numbers from the right places or switching or adding a negative or something like that. So all very very easy but it's important to understand how they're all connected. There is another kind of equation that we can construct which uh, also describes a line and it's also based on vectors and vector notation and vector algebra. And that's obtained as follows. So let's consider again the line, same line that we had before. Actually it's not the same line, I've drawn it slightly differently. Uh, but it's the same idea. Okay, And we're going to assume that this line is going to be parallel to some vector that I'm going to call D. D for direction vector. That vector indicates the direction of the line. Okay? And also let's pick a point just like before on the line. Okay, Now what I can do is I can ask, alright, how can I identify another point on the line? How can I reach another point on that line? Well, once again, we're going to identify points and vectors, uh, remembering that uh, the coordinates of a point uh, can be identified with the vector which uses the same numbers as long as we think of the uh, representation of that vector that has its tail at the origin. So, what we're going to do is we're going to consider the vector x, y, which again has that representation as an arrow, just starting at the origin and ending at the point x, y. And I can think of it, uh, and I, I realize that I can uh, obtain, I can construct that particular vector by doing the following. First of all, I'm going to look at the vector x0, y0. So again, it's the vector whose representation starts at the origin and ends at the given point x0, y0. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to add to it the vector that joins x0, y0 to xy. That's the same vector that we used for the normal equations later. All right? But notice that this vector, of course, being on the line, is going to be parallel to the direction vector d1, d2. And therefore, I can write that my uh, new point x, y, x, y, which is really the generic point on the line, is going to be given to the vector given by the given point plus some multiple of the direction vector. Well, because this equation is all based on vectors now, we call this the vector equation of a line. And again, we have a short notation for it by using the bold case uh, representation of a vector. We're going to write that the vector equation of a line is given by x, which again is a vector representing the point, is equal to p, which is again a vector representing a specific point, a given point, sort of the what uh, played the role of the intercept or the point in the point-slope formula plus some multiple of the direction vector. Notice that I can choose the vector d as I wish, um, as long as it's parallel to the line. So in particular, I can choose d to be a vector which is obtained directly from a normal vector. So if I'm given a normal vector n1, n2, I can construct the direction vector as a minus n2, n1. And so if I use that, then the vector equation will become x, y equal x0, y0 plus a multiple of minus n2, n1. Again, 
minus n2 and 1 is still a direction vector, but it's a special one in the way it is constructed, is obtained specifically from a normal vector. Once we have the vector equations, then we can change them uh, in, uh, in a very easy way by isolating the two components or separating the two components. Remember, a vector is an ordered set of numbers, well, if, if, which are called components. If we in, uh, separate those two components, we can write the equations of a line in this particular way. x is equal to x0 plus t d1 and y equals y0 plus t d2. And these are called the parametric equations of the line or the parametric form of the line. Again, this is very much connected to the uh, vector equation and the 1, the 2 being the direction vector can be connected easily to the normal vector and therefore the whole thing can be connected to the normal equation. So all of these forms are all related to each other, which is not surprising since we're talking about the same line here. Now, notice also that this form is, uh, has the appearance and in fact has all the substance and the structure of a linear system and we're going to take advantage of that later on as we're going to put some of these ideas into practice uh, in a geometric sense.